Got it. Thank you, Mike. All right, guys, those of you that are new to, to what we're doing here today, we got some great folks coming in, but those of you that are new to what we're doing here today, uh, this is a Freedom Coaching event. My name is David Adam Kurz, and we host this Freedom Coaching every single Thursday at 11 a.m. If you registered on the Eventbrite immediately after the coaching session, uh, my assistant Mike that's on here will uh, send the recording out to everybody via email through the Eventbrite system. So we just kind of like create the email in Eventbrite. So you'll see like a message from David Adam Kurz and Eventbrite. And that message will show you all the information and stuff like that. We do have a coaching platform in development. Um, and some of this stuff will probably move to there, but we'll work together on that. And if you join the coaching platform, uh, which the link to that will also be on the email, you'll have access to all the courses that we've done in the past couple months, which is really great. So I think, you know, so far we've committed to doing this. We've been doing it for, geez, probably like four months now, five months now. And it's been an, uh, a very active group. So I expect it to continue to grow as we grow. And I'm just happy to be here with you guys. So because it is a freedom coaching event, we begin every freedom coaching event with stating the words, it is a freedom day. So I would love for you guys to go in the chat and I want you to write in there, it is a freedom day. Go ahead and do that. I'll give you a minute while I adjust my camera. Now, some of y'all might be wondering why we why we commit to saying it's a freedom day and why we're super strong about that. Ladies and gentlemen, you do this coaching so you can build a stronger, better business, right? And why are you doing it if not trying to find your freedom, whatever that might mean to you, right? And so that's where the name Freedom Coaching came from. That's how we developed it. So we're going to jump right into this coaching session. It is absolutely a freedom day. Really excited to have everybody in the group today. Um, as you can tell, I am as fired up as I typically am. So I'm going to share my screen with you guys. And we're going to rock right to it. You guys ready? Now, bear with me. I'm going to share screen and I'm going to pin myself real quick. All right. And I'm going to open up the chat just in case I see one of your messages come through. And we're going to start this slideshow. No, it's the other way around, people. All right. Let me swap this around real quick. I got multiple screens, so I always got to play around with where it's going to show up. All right, which one do you guys see? Help me out here. Dual display, the Freedom Achiever, and it's a Freedom Day, so let's go. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Let's kill this. Sorry, guys, technical issues. Now we get started. Look better, right? 10 4. All right, Roger that. Thank you very much. Mike, we got people in the waiting room. Go ahead and let them in, please. Um, absolutely. Today, we're going to talk about treating your business like what it is. It's an actual business, right? Now, we talk about this a lot, and we have talked about this a lot in our past sessions, but this time we're going to play a little bit uh, of, of a more intense uh, action in it. We've already done this. It's a freedom day. Let's go. Let's roll right into it. Here's the reality, guys. An estimated 80 to 87% of agents fail in the first few years, right? That's a, by the way, that's a very staggering number. Now, right now, real estate has been so easy, right? Like if you think about how strong real estate has been over the last couple of years, it's been so easy that you could be a new agent and really dominate and create business, right? What's going to happen now with the changes that we're seeing in the market and normalization, right? Coming to a normal market. Well, now we're going to have to go out there. We're going to have to work for this, right? And so those of you who are serious about being real estate professionals, guys, you're going to work for this and you're going to do great at it. 
but there are going to be many agents that fall right into that estimated 80 to 87% of agents that fail in the first few years. The Small Business Administration says four, four out of five small businesses fail in the first five years. Again, big reason behind this, right? Big reasons behind this. First of all, top two reasons is no business management experience and lack of financial literacy and discipline. Those are huge pieces, like if you really think about it, right? Lack of financial literacy and discipline and no business management experience. Now, does that mean that if you have no business management experience, you're going to fail? No. It means that you need to go out, you need to learn, you need to educate yourself, right? Because if you've never ran a business before, okay, you have to get into this business and understand it. There's also a piece in there that says antiquated industry theory, right? Where many folks are working on an antiquated mindset, therefore having a limited mindset. And so you don't really push forward in the way the business is running today, okay? So some of the solutions, right? Off the bat, run your business like a business, change your mindset and get educated. Focus on the micro, not the macro, right? This is a really big one though, by the way. And, and I hate that we flew by the first two things. We always say, run your business like a business. That's 100%. We have to run our business like a business, guys. 100%, right? Change your mindset and get educated. So if you are falling within the mindset right now that you're freaking out because the market's going to change and or the market has already changed, it's already shifted, and you're finding that everyone is now calling it. Remember like two weeks ago, three weeks ago, everybody was like, oh my God, the market's going to crash. Everybody's going to die. Like, you know, no one's going to sell a house again. Let's burn them all down and run, right? Like that was what two, three weeks ago is happening. Now the message is, oh guys, we're just falling into normalization. But if you understand your numbers, like we went over last week, you understand you've known normalization for the longest time and you can block the noise that happens. So change your mindset is saying, okay, instead of being nervous about a shifting market, let me embrace the shifting market. And then let me get educated on how to better succeed in a normalized market. For those of you that have been licensed for less than three years, you have no idea what a normal market is. For those of you that have been list, uh, licensed for 10 plus years, you understand the big rise, the crash, the fall, the normalization, then the height again, and now we're facing normalization again, right? And so, you know, a normal market, guys, is a listing on the, if a listing goes on the market and sits for six months before it goes under contract, that's normal. 22 minutes is not normal. Okay, like putting a listing on the market and it's gone in 20 minutes is not normal. Okay, normalization is a six month market with a six and a half percent interest rate and an inventory balance to the buyer sheet. Okay, now let's get super focused on the micro and not the macro. Like the macro is the big picture, right? Where that's why I wanted to really be, bring in last week's lesson because the big picture is. This is what's happening in the United States and the nation. And this is what CNN, Fox News, and CNBC is putting out, right? And so then there's the micro, which is, well, this is what's happening in my backyard. And no one's going to report to you what's happening in your specific backyard. You have to do that research. That's why last week came in super clutch, super important, right? Now, I'm trying to use my clicker here. Won't let me. All right. So the levels of business are entrepreneur, manager, and technician. We all know this, right? There's the technician, the person that does the work. There's the manager that supervises the work. There's the entrepreneur that has built and developed the business and is the one that comes with the ideas, right? So there's a theory called, or not a theory, but an acronym called UPAD. UPAD is understanding, planning, action, and discipline. So we're going to get a little bit into this because you guys know I wrote a book, right? It's somewhere around here. I don't even know where my book is, but I wrote a book called Take Action. And so the first book that, that we wrote, I wrote with a partner of mine and we wrote it called, it was called The Blueprint. And it was designed to help people just understand the very basics of creating the blueprint of business and being able to help them grow their business. Then what we realized was in, in writing and creating that book, 
We gave everybody all this information, but we didn't give them actionable items to be able to take to the next level. So we wrote, or I wrote a second book called Take Action, because you have to actually, first of all, understand the business, understand what you're getting into, plan for it, take action in it, because you can plan all day and you can have great goals. Like one day I'm going to drive a Rolls Royce, right? But if you have no plan in, 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 in motion and you're not taking action on that plan, it's impossible for you to reach that goal, right? You have to take action on that plan. So we did, um, oh, look at this. My wife is awesome, right? So we wrote this book first. Then we realized everybody had great info, but wasn't doing anything with it. So we wrote this book next. And hopefully that helps some people, you know, do some good work. We got a third one coming out. Um, but that one's like a whole different theory. And we'll get into that. We're going to have like a whole coaching session based on that third book that's probably going to last like three months okay which is going to be a lot of fun um <clears throat> now is also adding the discipline so i've been saying something a lot lately and i've been saying it to my team on a very heavy level and i said it the other night at my house we had a bunch of folks over all industry professionals and i was thinking for a moment and i said you know very very few people have the discipline to do what's necessary in their business, right? And so we've had we've had coaching sessions where we talk to you guys about setting aside the time, working your calendar, knowing how many people you need to call every single day, how many conversations you need to have every single day, and being able to put those things into effect. But where the discipline comes in is not allowing anything else to come in and mess with that time, right? So the amount, so what I told everybody is the amount of effort that you put into your business will yield you equal results, right? So if I put in two hours a week on my business, well, I'm going to yield equal results. That's, that's what I'm going to get in return, right? But if I put in two hours a day, specifically micro on calling my leads or connecting with past clients or connecting with my online leads or connecting with my sphere of influence or just rolling down my cell phone and calling people at random, going after starting A, working my way all the way to Z to see what business I can drum up. That's what it takes, that discipline right there to do that on a daily basis is what it takes to really create big business for yourself. And if you're capable of doing that and you have the discipline to do that, you're going to find that that's going to yield you bigger and better results, right? So this is UPAD right there. Your manager zone is understanding and planning, and the technician zone is action and discipline. Now, here's the crazy part. When you are a solo agent, you're all of this, right? You're the technician, you're the manager, you're the entrepreneur, you know, you're the one that has to implement all of this. And at some point, this is what I pray for each and every one of you guys, is that you build and develop leverage. And we've talked about leverage at a very high level. A few weeks ago, we actually built out an entire team. And we talked about who to hire, who, who comes first, who comes second, right? We talked about all of that. And that will bring you up and pull you into a manager's zone. Right. And so you'll be the one understanding the market, understanding the systems, knowing what needs to be putting the plan into effect, and then you will go to your leverage and put them in action and create the discipline for them, right? And so once you're, once you're at this level, there's another level that's that entrepreneur zone when you bring up some of your technicians to be managers and you fall into the entrepreneur zone and now you are in a massive like overview balance, right? What's going on here? All right, so discipline is tracking. The manager sees, reports, and adjusts. This is what you have to be doing in your business. We've talked about this in the past. Knowing where your money goes, understanding your tasks. Like, look at this picture right here. You've got your tasks. You've got important hit lists. You've got your leads that are pending you, right? You've got your pipeline. You know your numbers, right? How many total sides? How many total production? How many are under contract? How many appointments you've completed? what the average commission is, what the average sales price is, outbound contacts, and your finances. 
this right here, like guys, uh, I know we're going to record this and we're going to give you guys a session and it's also going to be available inside of the workbook, but um, I want you guys to, to take a screenshot of this if you can, or just, you know, take a picture of it or whatever the case is, because I believe that if you can focus on all these things and there's, listen, there's a lot of discipline that goes into this, that there's, there's, there's discipline so simple as I just close a deal. Let me go update my CRM and my information pieces, right? Like it is that simple. Those small disciplines and those small pieces are what is going to help your business grow. If you know this stuff, look at that GCI goal year to date, what he's got year to date, what the gap is, right? How much he's missing to hit his goal percentage towards the goal. He's 58.71% towards the goal. Like, Putting these plans and understanding all this tracking will help your business grow at a severe level. Now, we're going to spend some time in the future really digging into, you know, tasks and hit lists and leads and so forth and so on, because there are systems that are holistic systems that will handle all of this for you, right? Like Chime, KB Core, all these different CRMs, they will do all of this for you. You just have to have the will and the, the 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 willingness to go in there and input the information and prepare the information for yourself. If you do this and you track this every day, even the numbers don't change for 10 days, 15 days, but you're tracking this every day, you know exactly where you're sitting. The number that should be changing every day is how many appointments you have and how many people you're calling and your pipeline growth. Now, success happens easily. When you have a vision, understand what's required, you make a plan for it, you put it into action, you have the discipline to do the work and track the results, and then you build accountability. See, accountability is very strong. Accountability reduces failure rate significantly. Accountability reduces negative gaps and accountability helps you win. Now, if you are very disciplined, you're capable of holding yourself accountable right? Like I always compare it to the gym. I don't know how many of you are like love going to the gym and stuff like that, but I try to go to the gym as much as possible. The days that I don't go to the gym, I have this overwhelming guilty feeling, whether it be I didn't wake up on time and now I'm booked the entire day. So there's going to be no opportunity for me, right? Or that I ended up having to go to the gym because I had really early appointments. I ended up having to go to the gym in the afternoon, but that's not the discipline part because if I go to the gym in the afternoon, I know my phone is blowing up back to back to back to back the entire time is there. So am I holding myself accountable to the gym? Absolutely not. And if you go consistent enough, those days that you don't go, you feel bad about it. That's how it should be with lead gen, by the way, right? If you commit to two hours a day of lead generation where nobody gets to mess with your time and then two days pass by where you allowed people into your time and you didn't hold yourself accountable well then you have this situation where your gut should tell you like how what a what a jerk you feel like for not taking care of yourself and your business right and so another piece is to be able to find a great accountability partner and when you find an accountability partner you know, in, in the army, they call them battle buddies, you know, and things like that. Like, if you can find a great accountability partner who is on focus as much as you're on focus, you guys can check in with each other on a daily basis. It could be so simple as sending a text message to each other and saying, hey, I worked, I did for two hours, I contacted X amount of people, and I spoke to X amount of people, and I created X appointments and a potential listing or a potential buyer or whatever the case is. And then your accountability partner writes you right back what they did. And then the good thing about this is how bad does it feel for you to write back and go, man, I missed my slot today with your accountability partner, right? And so like on my team, we have accountability Thursdays. And so every Thursday morning, 9 a.m., we get on a Zoom call and we go right down the line. What are you up to this week? What has happened this week? And it's very sickening in the gut when somebody has to come up and go, ah, 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 ah. so what do you do? Because you know you have that accountability call, you put in work that week and you help yourself. That accountability helps significantly. 
Now, on our coaching platform that, that we did send the link out last week to, if you haven't joined, please join, participate. But we're going to have opportunities in the coaching platform for people to post and talk within the courses and communicate with each other. So we want to build community in there. Uh, you know, my personal team and you guys are like the beta test for this program. Uh, so go in there, comment, make noise, ask questions, do what's necessary, alert the whole crew, right? And, and get into it. So now let's go ahead and discuss the first part of the business plan. Now, for me, business planning is like a two-part thing. Should be like a 10-part thing, right? But we're going to overview this at a very high level, okay? So it's 30,000 foot view. But what will happen is over the next week, you will hold yourself accountable by putting together the first parts of your business plan. It is, guys, it is August, right? We're in August. September, October, November, December. Guys, we got four months left and this year is over. So you know what that means? By next month, by September 1st, 2023 has already begun. Because whatever calls that you're making in September to generate business, well, let's just imagine. September 1st, I make a phone call to John Smith. John Smith picks up the phone. John says, hey, man, yeah, I think I'm ready to buy. All right, fantastic. Let me put you with my lender. Put him with the lender. Lender has a conversation with them. Takes about two days, let's say, 48 hours to turn around a pre-approval. Let's say that John Smith needs to pay something off so he can afford a bigger, a better price tone. Let's say it takes him 30 days to pay that off. Now we're in October. Now October, we get the pre-approval that we want. So we start looking at homes. Let's say in today's market, it takes us 30 days to get under contract, right? So now it's November. You see how quick this goes away, right? And then now November hits, you get them under contract, 30, 45 days till closing. That goes into December. The seller says, no, I don't want to close on December 15th because Christmas is right there. And I don't want to move my family the week of Christmas. So let's push the closing to January. Or let's close and give me a post-occupancy agreement till the beginning of January, right? And so this is what happens at the end of the year. So right now, we're talking about business planning which would some folks would consider as early, I think we're already late, okay? So now let's get hot into this real quick. Sorry. All right, so the purpose of a business plan is knowing exactly what you want. Now, this is some courses that we did with Tom Ferry as well. So I pulled some of the stuff that Tom did and I brought it in here because I would love for you guys to see it. You know, Tom Ferry is coming to South Florida November 3rd. We're hosting him for a big conference here in South Florida. Hopefully a bunch of you guys can make it. But this is talking about knowing exactly what you want, having a clear vision, having direction and guidance, funding and exposure, and testing the feasibility of your validity of your ideas, right? Now, remember when we talked about uh, a few weeks ago, we talked about when you implement a plan and you implement some kind of structure or a system, you have to test it out for 90 days, right? So that's that testing for feasibility or validity of the ideas that you bring to the table and having a clear vision of them and a true understanding of them before you fully interact them, right? Now, let's get into the focus questions, right? What does my ideal business look like? So that's a question for you. This is something that you sit down and you look at. Guys, take pictures of this, whatever. I know the recording's going out later, but these are the things that are gonna help you sit down. You're gonna look at these questions. You're gonna get a notepad. You're gonna write these things down. What does my ideal business look like? And write that down, figure that out. How many transactions will I or we close? Maybe you have a team. How much volume and GCI will I put on the table? Gross commission income. How much gross commission will I put on the table? What are my expenses, right? And so expenses meaning, do you have office space? Do you have lead flow that you pay for? Do you have systems that you pay for? You know, do you have marketing pieces that you pay for? What do you do with each listing? How many listings are you taking this year? And how much marketing, how much, what's your budget per listing? 
how much gas am I going to burn taking buyers around to see 30 houses? Right? These are all things that you need to think about when running my expenses, right? How much will we save and invest? Because that's a big part and it's a part that many people forget. You, most real estate agents are like the shoe shiner with dirty shoes. You know what I'm talking about, right? Most real estate agents help other people invest in great opportunities and don't take the opportunity to do it themselves. Here we are with the master knowledge, the master access, the master sheets, and we don't do it for ourselves. So ask yourself, in the next 12 months, in 2023, how much will we save and invest, right? How much time will I take off? See, now this is a big one and a lot of people disregard this. I am a big believer in blocking your time off on your calendar. If I'm gonna harp at you guys and force you guys to use a Google Calendar and really dig in deep on your Google Calendar, and really dig in deep on everything being in there, inclusive, the meditation time, gym time, prayer time, time off for church, like whatever it is, like all that stuff. Plus, this is when I cold call. This is when I show properties. This is when I can be interrupted. This is when I cannot be interrupted. This is when I, uh, you know, uh, reach out to my sphere of influence. This is when I reach out to past clients. This is when I check my emails. This, If you're going to do all that, right, then you also have to focus on your time off. Give yourself time to rest. If you do not, you will burn out. Trust me. Okay. So give yourself the opportunity to rest. Most people just rest when things stop moving. But if you are super disciplined and you're putting in the work, things will never stop moving. They will continue to happen for you. And that is a very good problem to have. And since things will never stop moving, you need to figure out how much time you're going to take off and how you will leverage your business during that time. And then we always add this one, how many reviews will I add, right? Because a lot of us forget to get those reviews and I think they're critical. When we went through social media and we went through uh, lead reviews, we talked about making sure that you're getting reviews on your, on your Google, that you're getting reviews on your um, realtor.com, on your zillow.com, get those reviews. And if you're Google, if you don't have a business set up on Google already as a real estate professional, take care of that. Get that done so that your buyers and sellers can go to Google and bless you with a review. It makes you more searchable. It makes you more credible. And you can take these reviews and copy them and paste them onto your website and then link them back to the Google review section telling people, look at me, I have a five-star rating with 300 reviews. That speaks volume as a real estate agent, but most of us are missing out on that. Now, here's the nine sections of a business plan. Um, this, you could read anywhere, you could look this up, but it is vision, personal goal, business model, what your business model is, right? doesn't matter that your company has a business model. You personally, as a real estate professional, need to have your own business model. Revenue and services, client growth, competition, marketing strategy, and performa. What's your cash flow? Now, let's dig into this. Your vision. We've spent like massive time on vision, and it's still a big piece of it. It was a part of your SOP platform. It has to be a part of your business plan. What is the vision for your business, your team, and your company? What is that? All right. And that's how we, we're going to begin because when you started thinking about the original questions where we said, you know, what does your business look like to you? Like, what does your whole business holistically look like? How are you creating your business? Those questions fall into vision and mission, right? Personal. Let's talk about it. Who are you? What's your resume? How much have you sold? How many homes have you sold? How many clients have you given? How many clients have you received? Right? This is referral based. This is everything. You as a person... How much have you done and where are you going with this? What are your goals, right? So this is the where are you going? What are your businesses and personal goals, income goals, marketing goals, sales goals, right? Uh, where's your company headed? And we're talking about your company. I'm not talking about the company you're with. I'm talking about you. You are a business. You are 1099. You are a business, right? So where is your company heading? How will it get there? Are your goals measurable and trackable? 
Are your goals measurable and trackable? I have a goal to have this. Great. What is this? This is um, $10 million in sales this year. Great. How do I track and, and, and measure how we will get to $10 million in sales? It's very possible. We've talked about it in the past. We'll continue to talk about it here. Your business model. Are you a team? Are you an agent? Where are you headed? Are you an agent now and you want to be a team in six months? Right? Or, and listen, if you're new to the industry, please stop trying to build teams. Be a part of a team and then go build a team when you have some experience. Right? But if you're a new agent and you're just trying to put five friends together and create a team, that's the blind leading the blind, guys. Understand that and find the value in mentorship. Find the value in mentorship, okay? Revenue and services. So what services do you render, right? Now, a lot, a lot of you are real estate agents on this, on this call today, right? And I get that. But does it mean that you can't narrow down a niche to what services you render? Do I only do listings? Do I only work with buyers? Am I primarily one or the other? Am I a mix? Do I have leverage for one? right? Do I focus on first-time home buyers? Do I focus on military veterans? Do I focus on luxury real estate? Do I focus on waterfront properties? Do I give free CMAs? Do I charge for CMAs? Do I send mailers? Do I door knock? Do I do social media at a very high level? What services do I render? And what kind of revenue have we done and revenue we intend to receive? based on the services that we render. Client growth and retention, how to earn new clients. So now this is where in your business plan, you start thinking about how do I earn new clients and how do I retain previous clients? That second one right there is so important because if you build your entire business on earning new clients and you forget about your previous clients, you will always be leaning forward a step ahead meaning you won't be able to catch yourself ever in this business. And so you'll always be looking for that next deal, always be looking for that next client, always be, when you, if you just, if you close 30 clients this year, 30 clients this year, each one of those clients, if you do a really great job at retaining them as clients and retaining them as friends and building the relationships with them, each single one of them should give you three new leads. They're not all going to work out, but they build your pipeline. Each and every one of them should give you three new leads. So if you have, let's break it down from what, for mighty even numbers, right? If I close 10 deals this year with those 10 people, if I create great relationships and have massive agreement on follow-up, and really get focused on them and understand how to retain my previous clients, next year, I'll have 30 leads from those 10. And so if I focus on earning my new clients, if I do exactly what I did last year to get the 10, well, I'm going to get another 10. Because if you do the same thing, you're going to get the same results, right? But on top of the 10, I'm going to earn 30 new leads. And if 15 of those close... Well, the next year I got 25 homes closed. And then I take those 25 and I stay massively focused on, on, on relationships and follow up and phone calls and how you doings and pass on the back and happy birthdays and happy anniversary. And here's a thank you card and here's a Christmas card and here's a happy Halloween. And here's a client appreciation event that we're doing. Free drinks and hot dogs on me. If you continue to do these things, well, those 25 should give you three new leads apiece for the next year, 75 new leads. And if only 30 of those close, and you're doing the same exact thing you did on year one to get 10, well, that's 30 plus 10. And now you got 40 new closings. Do you see how you went from one to 25 to 40 over a three-year span? just by significantly fo focusing on previous clients. Understanding your competition, right? 
So Tom Ferry always asks the questions, have you ever Googled a few competitors, right? What are they doing? What do their websites look like? What are they promoting? How are they on social media? This is not to create envy. This is not to create false results. This is also not to study someone's exterior, not understand the interior of their business, but this is to understand what they're doing, how they earn their business. If you know there are three, four, five top producing agents or teams in your area, follow them. Go on social media and follow them. See what they're posting. See how they interact with clients. See if they interact inside the social media. Are they sending mailers? Are you getting their mailers at your house, right? Are they... Uh, big Zillow clients? Are they big Realtor.com clients? Like who are they and how are they building their business? Understanding that will help you understand how to compete. So when we talked about competition a few weeks ago, we talked about not getting engulfed in the competition. This is not about beating them. This is about you dominating your business, not putting them out of business, but you dominating your business. And one of the sweetest things you could ever find by studying your competition is where the holes are. If you can fill the voids, if you can find what's missing, you could create a whole new platform in your community. And people will begin to focus on you. And sometimes that's all that's necessary. Just because somebody dominates an area doesn't mean everybody likes them. It just means they happen to be the one that's in everybody's face the most. There's a lady here in South Florida. No one likes her. Not any realtor, not any client, no one. But she still dominates a very luxury area. Right? Why? Because she stays in everyone's face all the time. They just believe that she's the only person in the neighborhood that could ever sell those types of properties, even with being a jerk. If somebody else just came in and went on full attack, they could take a part of that business. Because people will want to work with fresh new blood that brought something new to the table, not the same exact thing somebody else is saying. I told you guys um, last week we talked about a study and the study or last week or the week before we talked about a study and the study was a, a very unique mailer study. And basically what they did was they hit a neighborhood with 100 homes and they went to the 100 homes and they knocked on the door and they said, hey, we just have, we're doing a survey. Who's the number one realtor in the area? And so they wrote down the names of this number one realtor in the area. And when they finished the survey, what they found was there was no consistency amongst anyone, right? Everyone gave a name that they knew, maybe some didn't because they didn't know, but anyone gave a name that they knew, there was no consistency in the area. And then what they did was they created a fake realtor, fake phone number, fake email address, fake picture, fake company, fake everything. They created a fake realtor and they did an eight by eight campaign over eight weeks, right? And so they were sending mailers out and creating social media in the area, but more importantly, sending mailers out, sending mailers out. Then after the eight week period, they went back to the same hundred homes, knocked on the doors and asked, who's the number one realtor in the area? And more than 70% of the people said the fake realtor's name. They'd never met her before. She does not exist. She was a stock photo. Purchased on Google probably, right? And because of that, she dominated that area. So knowing who your competition is, is not about taking them out of the game, more about how do you fill the gaps? How do you fill the holes? How do you compete in the area? What do you bring different to the table? And then taking your fair share of the piece. Marketing strategy, what drives your business clients and revenue to your business, right? What type of marketing are you doing? We've mentioned a lot of different types of marketing recently. Some things are not for everybody. I love being in front of the camera, right? Me and my phone, we're best friends. So I love doing videos on social media. I love posting videos on social media. I have fun with reels, right? My wife got me into the real thing. So I started doing more reels. Then all of a sudden, his Instagram started messaging me. 
uh, sign up for this program and get paid for your reels. Now I'm getting like four or 500 bucks a month on reels. Like it's just, it's the silliest thing ever. And all it is, is massive consistency. Right. But that's what I enjoy. I know that's not everybody. So maybe those of you that are not into social media, but understand that social media is important. Maybe you just hire a little social media manager for 400 bucks a month and you have them run your social media and post really cool and nice things for you. And you focus on maybe what you're good at. Maybe you're good at door knocking because you have the ability to create conversation. Maybe you're not good at door knocking and you're the type of person that needs to be on the phone. Well, maybe you're the cold caller. Maybe you're that person. Which, by the way, if cold calling is a part of your marketing strategy, it is extremely important, extremely important that you know whether or not that person is on the do not call list. Because that will be a lawsuit you do not want to have. OK, that is a federal violation, folks. There's no winning that lawsuit. You're just going to have to pay. OK, what marketing have you done previously in the past? Think about that. And what has worked for you? What has been your ROT, your return on time? What has been your ROI, your return on investment? Right. Because some things cost time and some things cost investment. And if you can and you can value time by understanding what your worth is how much are you worth an hour and if so if this takes you know if you take last year's salary and you break it down to 40 hour weeks and you realize you're worth 300 bucks an hour is creating social media the smartest thing for you to do no posting maybe but creating the graphics and the arts and all that stuff and all that is that 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 10 15 dollar an hour work right there is that worth an hour of your $300 an hour time? No. So you start to focus on that. Cash flow. What's your cash flow? What are you left with, right? So understanding this is how much it costs me to promote a listing. This is how much it costs me to work with a buyer. This is how much my systems cost me, whether it be CRM, marketing platforms, whatever you're using. This is how much my lead flow costs me, whatever you're using, Google, Chime, uh, Zillow, whatever you're using, right? And taking all of that and understanding what your return on time, return on investment is, and then understanding how much you're left with, your cash flow is gonna help you create and realize what are the best pieces of your business that are working extra great, right? So like if I'm posting, if I'm creating ads on Google and I'm doing Zillow ads at the same time, and I realize that my return on investment is greater on one over the other, I may either decrease my amount of spend on the other or eliminate it completely. And I might take that money and push it the other direction because I understand my return on investment so I can track my cash flow. Because if I invest it in the other direction, I will close more deals. If I close more deals, what's my average income per deal? How many deals do I need to create to even break even? And then if I wanna make 50, 70, 80% on my investment, how do I track that? These are all numbers you need to know, okay? Working on a plan from the main goals. So let me, let me. this is like probably like section two of business planning, right? But understanding each main goal, for every single plan, you have to have a main goal. So whether it be, okay, one main goal is I need to make this much a month. The other main goal is I want to close X amount of properties. The other main goal is I want to get 20,000 followers on Instagram. The other goal is I want to become the community leader in, you know, Johnson's housing community, like all these other things, right? And what happens is when you have those main goals, you're able to break them down equally on income and cash flow, marketing and services. And then understanding the finances, the types of business you're going to do there and what your offering is. So let's break this down real quick. We have a main goal for the year. We can break down each goal all the way down to the minute if you can really get super micro with it. Remember very early on, we were talking about not looking at things at a macro level, but really getting massively micro with them. So taking this and looking at my main goal for the year and saying, okay, I'm going to close 30 properties this year. Sales, not rentals. Rentals are bonuses. So I'm going to close 30 sales this year, right? 
because if you say deals, then you're gonna do a lot of rentals, right? So I want 30 sales this year. And if a renter comes to me, I'm gonna figure out how to get them qualified to buy a house because I got 30 sales planned out this year. Well, how many of that is quarterly? Then break that down to how many that is monthly. Then break that down to how many that is weekly. Simply knowing that number allows you to rotate back up again and say, okay, that means I need to work my numbers backwards. How many phone calls do I need to make? How many conversations do I need to have? How many meetings do I need to have? And how many people do I have to have on the road? And I can track that all the way back up to the yearly goal. And I can attach numbers to each and every piece of this. And the beauty of this is that once you break down each and every goal from year to quarter to month to weekly, what you're going to find out is that you can now fill in gaps in your calendar for things that need to be done on a weekly basis to accomplish your annual goal. Something as simple as saying, I am going to have 1,000 real estate conversations this year. Well, break that down quarterly, break that down monthly, break that down weekly, break it down daily, and you'll see that 1,000 conversations in a year, it's not really that hard to do. It sounds like a lot when you go macro, but when you break it down on a daily basis, right, you're going to understand that that is not that difficult to do. Let's play the numbers right now. If I want to have a thousand real real estate conversations this year, well, I'll break that down by quarterly. That's four quarters a year. That's 250 conversations I need to have a quarter. Monthly, divide that by three because there are three months in a quarter. That's 83 real conversations that I need to have in a month. And if I divide that by four weeks in the year, that's 20. And if I divide that by five days a week that I'm going to work, that's 4.16 conversations about real estate I need to have a day. Is that really that difficult? No, it's not. It's not. It's completely doable. All you have to do is have the massive discipline to continue to do it. Because all it takes is for you to spend one week not doing it, and then it gets super comfortable the next two weeks not doing it. And now you're behind schedule. And for most humans that go through that, they get super unmotivated when they realize they didn't reach their goal. Now, you're going to break this down for all aspects of your business plan, okay? Again, if it's not on my schedule, it doesn't get done. If it's not on my schedule, it does not exist. Everything must be on your schedule, all right? And then, so we have, I put this up here because I like to, talk about we we've heavily spoken about SWOT analysis financial planning competitor analysis executive summaries mission statements operations company background we've heavily spoken about all this stuff and so these are all pieces of your business plan that need to be in there this is a really great step up to being able to start jotting down the notes right up your accountability making making sure that you're getting stuff done and then taking action so this is something i wrote and i i often like put it in front of people's faces. I think it's in one of my books. It says, there are those who dream big, but fail to plan. There are those that plan and fail to take action. That's from someone else. But there are those that are selected few that build upon a plan by taking action. And those are the ones who continue to succeed. All you got to do is really plan it out and then take action on your plan every single day. Okay, guys. Now I'm going to stop this share because I want to... I want to dig in on something with you guys, right? This next week, your mission is to take the information you receive today, get a notebook, a notepad. Look, I have these things on my desk and I run through them, right? These things are cheap, man. You go to Amazon, you could buy these for like, like I think maybe 10, 15 bucks. They'll send you 20 of these, but it's a little note, notebook, right? And so just grab one of these. You know, and if you're crazy like me, you grab a bunch of them. And this one is for marketing. And this one is for sales goals. And this one is for recruiting goals. And this one is for um, team goals, right? And this one's going to be for personal goals, right? Maybe fitness, maybe meditation, prayer, whatever. And marriage goals, relationship goals, right? Uh, sphere of influence and past client situations, right? and go into each one of them and start writing out everything that we've recently discussed. 
And the reason that we want you to start it that way is because I don't want you to sit down and create your business plan this week. I want you to truly understand how you're going to capitalize and build upon it. So if I take this book right here, and I say personal goals. Well, I'm going to wake up at five o'clock in the morning. And the way that I'm going to do that is plan this out, right? If I'm used to waking up at 8 a.m., well, for the next week, I'm going to set my alarm for seven. Then the week after that, I'm going to go 6.30. And the week after that, I'm going to go to six. And the week after that, I'm going to go to 5.30. And the week after that, I'm going to go to five. And who knows, maybe when I go to five, I might get super motivated and go to 4.30. But you create the habit by creating the plan. You create the, pl you create the habit by taking action upon the plan that you created. Let me rephrase that, right? And so that might be a personal goal. Why do I want to wake up at 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning? Maybe that's the best time to hit the gym when my phone's not blowing up right? Maybe that's the best time for me to close my eyes, sit Indian style, meditate, do whatever I got to do. Maybe that's the best time for me to take a moment and jump in my pool when the rest of my house and my world is asleep. And just take a moment for me before the day begins. Could you imagine? Think about this for a moment. 4.30 in the morning, wake up, brush your teeth, have a little coffee, drop a pre-workout, hit the gym from five to six, come home, jump in your pool, or run outside, or do a little garden tender. You know, my wife likes to be in the garden. She goes out and messes with the flowers and stuff, right? And raises her butterflies. Like, that's her moment. That's her opportunity to do this uninterrupted by life. Now, take it to the sales goals. I want to sell 10 million, 20 million, 30 million, 100 million, whatever that is. And break that down. And if you run out of space, grab another one and say part two sales goals. But this is the mission that I have for you this week. The mission is for you to start writing all this stuff out, creating an understanding of it, putting the finance ideas behind it. But Dave, I ain't got no money yet. I'm a new agent. Or Dave, we've got a plan in effect and we know how much money we need to spend. Great. Write it down. Figure it out. I ain't got no money yet. I'm a brand new agent. Fantastic. I want you to have a sales goal and I want you to think of every single free way you can create business. Like maybe you just buy a t-shirt that says, I am a, I am a realtor. And you buy 10 of those. And that is the t-shirt you wear every single day, everywhere you go until you have enough business. Maybe you buy a sweater that has your team name on the back, but make sure it says real estate somewhere because if it says Johnson team, that doesn't sell, that doesn't tell the world anything, right? I have this hat here. People ask me about it all the time. You know, you guys are the freedom achievers. I'm the freedom coach. People stop me and ask me, what do you coach on? I wear this t-shirt on purpose to airports. It says, stack cash, invest in real estate, buy crypto, create legacy wealth. People come to me at the airport all the time the supermarket all the time. Hey, you do real estate? Hey, have you tied crypto into real estate? Hey, have you heard about real estate getting fractionalized on the blockchain? And I get to have those conversations and I get to get a new phone number. I'm a new agent, David. What else can I do? Go knock on doors. Go meet new people. Go interview restaurants in your local neighborhood. I'm really big on that. Why not? Show them some love. They will show you love. You hear me? Show them love. They will show you love. It's really that simple. So your mission and task for this week is to dial down on that. Next week, we're going to talk about how you format it and lay it out so we can begin the action taking week after. You guys with me? Give me a thumbs up if you're with me. Awesome, guys. Again, always try to be super respectful for your time. It is 11.59. Like we finished with a minute to spare. I appreciate everybody coming in this week. I hope you pulled away a shitload of information. Really excited to continue to work with you guys. Um, and I will see you next week. Same bat time, same bat channel, guys.